For a long time now, there's been a tried and true formula in the realm of AAA gaming and development with regards to game release. What typically occurs is that well in advance of the actual release, an announcement is made and the hype ensues. Now traditionally, this has actually worked pretty well. At least in the past, it worked pretty well. Because publishers and developers would announce a game, and especially if it followed in the footsteps of other prominent titles, such as Fallout vis-a-vis -vis Elder Scrolls, or vice versa, or more historically Bioware and their titles, you generally had the sense of hype, of looking forward to something great. And in this video, I'm going to go into some of the details of why that may very well be changing, why the formula of announcing things well in advance is a successful formula, probably will not be the way forward, at least the singular way forward. And I think we're going to see a lot more variation in the future, and we might even see a reduction of this methodology. Now, before I go into the reasons, let's give some very good examples of where hype failed in the past few years, say four or five years. The most obvious example, and I think you're reading my mind when I say this, is Fallout 76, and really anything Bethesda related. Fallout 4 to a lesser degree. Well, why do I say this? Fallout 76 was possibly the ultimate train wreck of AAA games, particularly in the last 10 years. I can't think of any other title that has failed on so many fronts, from the marketing, to the actual game mechanics, to the bugs, to the merchandise that they were trying to sell, be it excessively expensive jackets or coats, bottles that were supposed to be collector's items that turned out to be mere plastic and thus not worth the 89 or $90 that they were asking for, duffel bags, and the list goes on and on. It was a failure, a colossal failure. But Bethesda, in typical fashion, as they have done for a very, very long time, announced several months in advance that this was coming out and that it would be a great thing. And people were hyped because God Howard, as is typical for him, made several announcements saying it would be unique, the largest project they worked on to date, and one assumed many things, and one tends to assume things based on history, the historical track record of the developer in question, that all of that would be baked into the game. Well, the day arrives and Fallout 76 is released, and it is a total pile of shit. And it gets worse and worse, not better, as time goes on. Almost universally poor reviews, people that were traditionally Fallout fans or Bethesda fans, even they had to turn on their beloved Bethesda. We fast forward to now, and nobody thinks Fallout 76 is a good game. And that singular event, if you wish to call it a singular event, the event of Bethesda releasing that game, with all the overhype prior to it, has resulted in an absolute state of mistrust regarding Bethesda. Nobody in his right mind thinks Bethesda is good to go when it comes to releasing good games. We're all skeptical. I used to half-jokingly, half-seriously tell people I knew, friends, that the reason why I'm still alive is that I'm holding out until the Elder Scrolls Six. That's my reason for living. Wait for Elder Scrolls Six. Again, a kernel of truth there, also a kernel of hyperbole. All that aside, I have no faith in Bethesda whatsoever, and so I don't believe in their products anymore. But they've had this long history. If we go further back to the release of Fallout 4, it wasn't a terrible game, but it was compared to some other Fallout titles, specifically Fallout New Vegas, and to a lesser degree, Fallout 3, most of us were disappointed. This famous declaration by Todd Howard, it just works, that's when it became canonized, right? If you remember back in the day, well, it just turned out it wasn't that interesting building settlements. Most people thought that was a kind of useless add-on feature the voice protagonist. I mean, the list is pretty endless there, too. It wasn't terrible, but also wasn't amazing. And most of us thought it was below par for Bethesda. But again, the hype train. So Bethesda really, really set the track record for overhyping things, creating a hype train that people get psychologically and emotionally involved in, and then, boom, just blows up. But they're not the only ones. EA slash Bioware is also particularly good at this, or has been. And the most recent release by Bioware, Anthem, has turned out to be a relative train wreck too, and most of the reviews have been pretty negative. I'm not touching that thing with a 10-foot pole, but needless to say, some of the problems that are there, from what I've heard in reviews and seen, are lack of endgame content, lack of story, lack of variation, manipulation of loot and how much you can get, 
In fact, there was a bug there that was actually benefiting players and they thought it was good and Bioware removed it. And the list goes on and on. And there was a big announcement, big hype preceding Anthem. But you know what's strange in the hype train phenomenon is the emergence of Apex Legends. Again, not made by EA, only published by EA, and released rather surreptitiously unbeknownst to the public, and boom, it was a hit. Now, I'm not suggesting that doing it that way makes it an instant hit. Apex Legends is, by all accounts, I haven't played it, a very good game for what it is. It incorporates all the good elements of FPS, team-based cooperation, uh, Battle Royale, you name it, different abilities, a bit of Overwatch there, etc., etc., so people really enjoy it. The point I'm making here is that Apex Legends had no prior announcement. Now, I think there are two major reasons for this. The first one was it's hard to hype a game when you don't really know what it's about, although they could have said from the makers of Titanfall, because the makers of Titanfall did make Apex Legends, and they're generally regarded as very good developers. Most people I know that have played Titanfall 2 love that game and rant about it and rave about it. I've never played it myself, but say it's an amazing game that was criminally underrated and underplayed. Nevertheless, they could have done that. They didn't. The other reason, I think it's the main reason, is that EA already has probably, even more so than Bethesda, the most tarnished reputation in the industry as a publisher. And so when they say, hey guys, we have a new game coming up, they know there's some inherent risk to that. So they just released it and boom, Apex Legends is a hit. Free to play to be sure, but at the same time, loot boxes and what have you. And the same can be said of Ubisoft as a final example. Division 2 was announced way in advance. Of course, there have been betas. I tried the beta out. I wasn't that impressed. It's not a terrible game, but it's also nothing to write home about. And so the hype train is always created, and the hype train carries with it inherent dangers. And I think these inherent dangers baked into the hype train itself, coupled by the fact that it's typically AAA gaming companies and publishers that like to announce games well in advance of their actual release, I think that these factors are slowly but surely leading to a change in trend. And again, I think it's part of the essential nature of making announcements of this sort well in advance. What is the problem with the hype train announcing well in advance? There are two major problems I see. The first problem, which may or may not be obvious, is it leaves way too much room for interpretation. So a game is announced, right? And then you have a certain picture of the game because you're offered some limited footage or trailer and you're left salivating anticipatory hunger, as it were, for this game, maybe half a year in advance, thinking it's going to be a certain thing based on limited information you have. And interpretations run wild, but you don't know what the real product's going to be like. And so you have your interpretation of what it's going to be like. And a lot of that, of course, is predicated on previous experiences with the company. So, for example, prior to the release of Fallout 76, Bethesda still had a pretty good reputation. It's a bit lukewarm. It had become rather lukewarm. Certainly prior to Fallout 4, it had a solid reputation. Whatever criticisms you could level at them or whatever flaws they might have. But this interpretation, this personal, individualized interpretation and the expectations attached to it are effectively the stuff of fantasy in your own head and a lot of that is predicated and based upon previous experiences with the company. That's why people thought Fallout 76 was going to be a quote-unquote good game, even if it did not fit the conventional style of Bethesda. And that, of course, is really dangerous. Because if you have a certain interpretation and it's released, then you can be sorely, sorely disappointed. It's a bit like online dating, right? You check out some profile. There's some chick who looks like a 7.5 or 8, quite attractive, quite quote-unquote pleasant. And it turns out those photos are five years old. And when you actually meet her, you missed her because she's 50 pounds overweight. She's got wrinkles in her face because she aged so poorly. And it turns out that she was a chain smoker too and a part-time alcoholic. And you're thinking, wait a second. And a not too dissimilar thing happens with the hype train and anticipation and personal interpretation. You think you're going to get a certain type of game. And more often than not, especially these days, with limited information that is available at release, you tend to psych yourself out, and then when it's released, you're really, really disappointed. I offer to you again Fallout 76 and some of the backlash, because I can tell you that a lot of the backlash had to do with people's own personal hype they created in their own heads 
vis-a-vis the hype that Bethesda had offered when they said, hey, guys, look at this. This is an amazing game. It's the biggest game we ever worked on, blah de blah blah yada, yada, yada. And so people feel betrayed because they have their own vision in their own heads based on what little information they had received and what little footage they had seen as well. The other danger is pretty simple. I call it the danger of momentum. When you have a game that you announce half a year in advance, a year in advance, there is amount of momentum that builds up, irrespective of the individual's imagination and what they might think the game's going to be. And it's inevitable that with hype, the game gets built up to the point where sometimes it achieves escape velocity. And there's a baked-in level of disappointment there. And when you have games announced far in advance and the reactions turn out to be negative, the follow is that much harder and that much farther considering how the game itself had been launched into the stratosphere just based upon this super early announcement. That just doesn't work. It's hard to be super psyched or super disappointed when a game is released the same day and the announcement is made the same day. You don't have that buildup. And so there's an inherent problem with the buildup itself. And the blowback, we can call it gaming blowback, becomes immense. This is also what happened to Bethesda. One, people's imaginations had run wild. And two, people were waiting a relatively long time for the release of 76. And when it happened, the hype, the general hype had been there. People's vivid imaginations had been there. And it all turned out to be a shit show. And the backlash, the blowback, was that much greater for Bethesda. Now Bethesda is shivering and falling apart, and there are a lot of problems, obviously. Now, the reason why I see a shift away from this isn't just Apex. In fact, very recently, There was an intimation that something that classic RPG fans will love might be out reasonably soon, or at the very least some information will be out reasonably soon. I should mention this game, the original, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, made by a company called Troika in 2004. Troika also made a game called Temple of Elemental Evil based in Dungeons & Dragons Greyhawk, but eventually they went out of business. Generally speaking, most people regard Vampire Masquerade's Bloodlines is one of the great classic RPGs of all time. Not just of its year or decade, but of all time, to the point where people still play it, even though it's really, really old at this stage, and people have worked on mods, I believe, up until the present to improve it. Now, the thing is, it's a fact that Paradox Games, which is best known for things like Europa Universalis, Crusader Kings, etc., etc., that is RTS, real-time strategy games, had acquired the IP White Wolf that had made the pen and paper version of the game of Vampire Masquerade, as well as Werewolf the Apocalypse, Mage the Awakening, etc., etc., pen and paper role-playing games, in 2015. They had acquired in 2015, and everyone's head was spinning at the time as they thought, why would they waste a ton of money acquiring a relatively large IP to do nothing with it? Well, lo and behold, fast forward to the future, and this is the future right now, and it seems very likely that we're going to get some announcement related to Vampire, The Masquerade, and Bloodlines. And I'll be posting all this information in Lobar. They also have announced the opening of a new subsidiary studio that will be working on games unrelated to the RTS genre. And that is headed by the guy who made Sims. His name is Rod Humble. He's the head of development there. That particular branch is called Paradox Tectonic. Why would they do that? And there's also been some app related to phones intimating something related to blood. The big announcement, incidentally, is going to be coming on the 21st. Now, this could, I will admit, set a precedent for hype down the future. It's possible. But I think the pattern is more reminiscent of just announcing something quickly and not hyping it too much, just to let you know that there's something out there. And I admit, you still could get hype for this. You could still interpret things that aren't there and wonder what it'll be. Maybe it'll be a completely new version of Vampire the Masquerade, Bloodlines, maybe it'll be a remaster. Both would be welcome, although a new version would be even better, provided it maintains the old RPG elements and the things that made that game so great. But a sudden announcement as a style of releasing a game or announcing a game seems to be a much more conservative and reliable strategy compared to the alternative, which is announcing well in advance and building the hype train, which has a double-edged problem of potentially creating a lot of blowback for the company if and when it fails, and fans themselves building up the hype train vis-a-vis their imagination. So you have something released suddenly, there's not a lot of room for that. You either enjoy it or you don't. And here's a final point related to these big announcements. Yes, big announcements well in advance create hype, and yes, that can be a benefit overall, but the issue there is that 
gaming developers and publishers do not thrive off of one-time customers. So I'm pretty sure that Fallout 76 did really well the first couple of days because people were hyped and they wanted it, just like Mass Effect Andromeda, just like Division did in 2016. But you want people coming back. You want them to view it as replayable or at least playable. And that sort of defeats the purpose. So I think we're going to be seeing a difference in the trend of hyping games well in advance because the hype train, I think, long term is not a good strategy if you're not confident, and here is the conditional, if you're not confident in the product. On that point, and on a closing note, I would say that, yes, Cyberpunk 2077 is being hyped. And I think that works well for CD Projekt Red for the following reason. The only thing they've ever released has been the Witcher series, and Witcher 3 is universally regarded as quite a good game to an excellent game with excellent customer service. And so they have something really positive working in their favor, long development times, and the hype will obviously be a bit overdone just because people's imaginations run wild and they tend to get excited by things, as I pointed out. But I think they can make it work. I think that CD Projekt Red can make the long-term announcement hype train work. And based on information they've released at E3, we're going to be seeing more of Cyberpunk 2077. And by my estimation, it'll be released sometime next year in conjunction with the name of the original title, Cyberpunk 2020. So anyway, I think in most cases it doesn't work, especially with companies that have severely tarnished reputations like BioWare and Bethesda and publishers like EA. But in a few slight cases it can work. Better yet, just to release a game and see what happens and let the chips fall as they may. Because momentum can be a powerful thing, but it can definitely work negatively. And when momentum works negatively, you get the blowback and you get mass collective disappointment and nobody wants that. Anyway, more videos to come. I wanted to cover this topic because I think it's important as a trend in gaming and because I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of this in the future. These sort of short announcements prior to release rather than the buildup. Anyway, everyone take care. And as always, may the gods watch over you. And I will see you soon, assuming I'm still alive. Bye-bye. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.